Okay, welcome. This is the, the December 10th Solid Waste Advisory Committee meeting. Have we officially changed it to garbage and recycling? Not yet. Soon to be? No. Okay. After <laughs> soon. Just a reminder, everybody should be connected with computer audio. If you need to call in, you're going to be muted and I can unmute you. The presentation is recorded and we will post it to the Solid Waste and Recycling webpage in a week. If you have any questions, uh, this is for community members, you can use the Q&A function and then we will allow for um, question and answer during the allotted time. If you have technical difficulties, we refer you back to Zoom. Just a reminder on public comment, I don't see any public attendees yet for this meeting, but if they pop in, I'll, I'll let you guys know. The uh, committee chair is um, the person that can recognize the public attendee. They will have to use the Q&A function to communicate. There is a designated time on the agenda. The first opportunity will be allow for two minutes per speaker with a maximum of 10 minutes total. The second opportunity allows for five minutes per speaker, about 10 minutes per topic. And with that. I think Aaron, I see Ashvin's in the attendee pool. Okay, as soon as I can't do it until I stop sharing. So hold on. And I'll get him back in here. Thanks. Can you guys hear me? Can hear you. Cool. Okay. Do we want to get this thing started? Should we do roll call, Mike? Yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, kick this off. This is the uh, December 10th Solid Waste and Advisory Committee meeting of uh, Washington County. Uh, we'll do a roll. I'll start with uh, myself. I'm Mike Lafferty, I'm the vice chair and public member of the committee. And we'll go to uh, Kathy. Oh, she wants to sneeze. <laughs> yes, I need to unmute, sorry. So I didn't have the sneeze out there for all of you. Um, Kathy Folsom with Washington County Solid Waste and Recycling Staff. Tom? Um, and this is Tom Eggleston. I'm with Washington County Solid Waste Recycling and a non-voting member of the advisory committee. Uh, the node. Same, uh, Far West Recycling um, Industry, temporarily voting member. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Ashton? Ashton Nagaraja, public member. Okay, uh, I see uh, Beth. Beth Vargas Duncan. Industry member and Vinod stole it from me. I almost said temporarily voting too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sue. Uh, Sue Shade, public member. Sandra. Sandra Smith, uh, public member. And um, I am sorry, I don't know your name. You kicked us off. You started the recording. <laughs> Hi, sorry, Aaron Stein with Washington County Solid Waste and Recycling. Oh, okay, Aaron, I won't forget. Thanks. Um, is that everybody? I think it is. Okay, I don't know where Ken is. He, I think, had planned to be here. Um, so we'll just, we'll press on without him. So that was the first thing on the agenda. The second thing is solid waste and recycling program updates. And I imagine you're gonna do that, Tom. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mike. Uh, all right, some quick updates. I have a, a kind of a smaller list and it actually feels a little bit like deja vu from last month. Um, some updates on some updates from last month. <clears throat> so the first one um, I think is pertinent this group is the metro rate increase, um, metro's tip fee rate increase. 
Um, so we had um, so lots of developments <laughs> since um, last month, um, and there was a lot of um, conversation, political circles, political conversation at city council meetings and city manager groups and with Metro's um, executive staff. Um, and the rate proposal essentially was presented to their council this week on Tuesday in a work session um, with a kind of a two options. Um, one option was to go forward with the originally proposed rate increase of, of around $9 that would be effective February 1st, with another one coming in July 1st. And then the second option was to bundle the potential July and the potential February increase together and to do one larger increase on July 1st of 2021. Um, and that one seemed to get the support from the council. Um, my understanding is they were given direction to come back next week, which would be next Thursday, um, with that rate increase package. And it was uh, $15.54 to be effective July 1st, um, 2021. Um, that lines up with rate review timelines, um, but it, and it gives us some certainty into what size of rate increase we're going to be dealing with in 2021. So I think those are positives. It is still a pretty significant increase. So that um, is going to be something we're all going to have to deal with in our, in our kind of rate review processes. Um, we did some, we asked our CPA firm to kind of give us a, a little bit of a hint about what that might mean for our average residential customer. Um, and they think between 85 cents and a dollar per customer for just that portion of the rate increase, um, more likely on the dollar side um, because tonnage uh, might be up in the residential sector on, in 2020. So that would just be more of those disposal costs in that um, line item. And then on the commercial side, <clears throat> I think we're, they were looking at about six to $7 per container yard um, would be the equivalent pass through cost there. And Sue, I know you had asked um, what was our estimate. And then for the 924, I think we were looking at $4 was an estimate per container yard. So this boosts that up a little bit, but it also gives us certainty um, for the through July and not just for the next six month window. <clears throat> um, so they are, like I said, voting on that next Thursday. And I see no reason why, um, based on the work session, I assume it's going to um, go through the council meeting. So there's that. <clears throat> um, today, I actually wasn't in attendance of the meeting and I didn't, I don't actually technically know the outcome. Beth, you might know. Um, the Metro's regional service standards was voted on today, is my understanding, um, for multifamily services and those kinds of things. Was, did that, did you attend that? Unfortunately, I had a meeting at exactly that same time. Yeah. It was, <laughs> okay. I mean, you might know. So. Yeah, so I didn't attend it either. I assume it was going to be adopted. They did a public hearing um, last week um, and it was, they had no comments in opposition. The council gave um, positive remarks about the proposal. So I assume that was passed too. And that will result in us having to make some rule changes in regards to our service standards for multifamily um, recycling. If you remember, that was um, the minimum service standards for apartment complexes based on number of units, color coding containers in apartment communities, and um, regional decals and stickers in apartment communities. There was a host of other things in that package of rule changes, um, but those were the real, um, the meaty ones that were new, let's put it that way. Um, and we will, in our meeting summary, we can send out a link to that um, and uh, confirm that it was adopted if it actually in fact was. <clears throat> um, bill assistance program can, is seen an uptick in folks using it actually in the last week or two, which is um, classic in that it's going to go away at the end of the month and now everybody's starting to realize it's there and using it, which is unfortunate. Um, they've have, um, supported $20,000 worth of bills so far um, since the beginning of this week and they're anticipating they might be able to get another $20,000 out the door by the end of the month. Um, so that's helpful for folks. Um, struggling to pay their bills, um, another, uh, some $40,000 worth of garbage bills paid off in the county, which is a, a positive. Um, Oregon DEQ's uh, legislative concept for modernizing Oregon's recycling, which is um, going to be a big legislative effort in the 2021 legislative session this coming year, um, is now out in draft um, legislative concept form. So it's actually written like a bill. Um, there's a lot of work, feverish work, trying to get 
um, stakeholders together to fill some of the gaps. Um, they had kind of a uh, high level agreement from their recycling steering committee where it was the vision for the program. Um, and the legislative concept was drafted by a legislative council at, um, that's in the state. And so there were some areas I think that DQ highlighted and flagged that needed some work. Um, they hosted a couple meetings so far with the stakeholders that were involved in the steering committee and, and additional stakeholders to try to help fill those gaps so they can get a, an amendment into that bill before um, it starts going into committee hearings um, in the beginning of the legislative session. I think they have an early January deadline to kind of submit their first big amendment to, to get it back to where they think it needs to be to, to meet the spirit of the agreement for the steering committee. I was involved in a very, or not involved in a listening to a very interesting conversation this afternoon on the processing side, um, kind of talking about the, the legislative concept asks for um, or is intended to essentially not increase costs for ratepayers, but it also has improvements at processing facilities included in it. And so there's a big discussion about how does that happen? What are those mechanisms, um, how does funding flow to processors and, and how does how is all those nuts and bolts work, which is a very um, complex situation and complex process. So it's going to be an interesting discussion as these things evolve um, and we get some potential amendments to that legislative concept. So we'll keep you all posted. We're very interested in it. Washington County is um, very interested. Our board see, um, expressed a lot of support up front for it in concept. Um, so our government affairs team is following it closely and planning to um, to work it in Salem this year with um, with other local governments. Um, we're, so we're close to hiring an education outreach supervisor. I said that again last week too. Um, we're doing second round interviews um, right now. We started yesterday, we'll end um, early next week and we hope to have a hiring decision here in the next week or two. It's gonna be exciting. And then I kind of, my last update here was kind of give an overview of the um, work session with the Board of Commissioners on the Solid Waste Advisory Committee code changes. Um, so I'd, I don't know if we want to jump into that now. Kathy, does that make sense? I just was had a very high level couple of statements in my presentation. So, so if you want to wait or do it now, it doesn't. You know. Yeah, why don't we wait and we'll kind of move into that agenda item and then you can kind of give the overview and then I can um, fill in, you know, my, my perception of it too. That's all I have for updates then. Is and that Ken, okay with welcome. you, Ken, that we, that we handle it that way? Does that work for you? Yes, it worked for me. And I want to apologize for uh, my technical difficulties getting on board, but I made it. So here we are. Um, Vinod, Vinod, where did you get that beautiful picture behind you? You have to unmute. Yeah, I, I clicked it. Um, that was the last time I was in an airplane, so whatever, last December or something, I was, we were flying over Crater Lake. So it was just a, it was a window snapshot. Oh, neat. Well, it's a very good one. Thank you. So onward and upward. Let's see here. Um, I don't have a current agenda in front of me, so I have the one that, that Kathy sent out earlier. Uh, starting with staff report and then draft committee bylaws. Um, is there more to it? We're on, uh, if there's any oral communication, probably not. Yeah. Like no attendees. Okay. So. No action items. <clears throat> so we're, I think, ready for the. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's go back to Kathy then. It started real, real quick. Um, Carl texted me and said he had something come up and he apologizes for not being here. So, thank you. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah. Okay. So, good evening. My name is Kathy Folsom and I'm here to here to discuss the proposed advisory committee bylaws. This is a two-part project. The first task was to update Washington County Code Chapter 804 to reflect any changes to the committee formation. And the second task that's before you tonight is to update the committee's bylaws, which will reflect the board's direction as well as provide all of the details around meetings and responsibilities for the committee. At our last meeting in November, we brought proposed code revisions pertaining to the committee before you. 
one of the new provisions in the code specifically directs that the board will approve the bylaws. Um, the board also gave us direction that staff should draft the bylaws and then bring them to the committee for um, as much discussion as needed. So we definitely want your inputs, but ultimately the board will um, approve its committee's bylaws. We are in the process of drafting. Oh, wait a sec, sorry. And then I was thinking Tom was gonna present that part. On November 17th, we went to a board work session um, with our code revisions that we uh, talked about at our last meeting with you. And there was a lot of discussion. And following that discussion, staff was directed to take another look at the proposed code language to ensure that the committee's purpose and duties aligned with our proposed amendments to the membership structure. So we are in the process of drafting a committee purpose and revised duties for the code and plan on meeting with the commissioners to get a better understanding of what their direction for this committee is. Direction from those meetings will provide further inputs to the proposed bylaws. Since we are in the process of redrafting the committee purpose and duties um, for the code changes, we've left the membership section and duties section in the bylaws before you as they were. I anticipate that those purpose and duty section of that draft will change. So if there are substantive changes, I just want to assure you that I plan on sending out a new draft and um, all comments will be welcome. Um, we want the committee's input on these um, bylaws uh, since they direct sort of all of the structure around your meetings. As it stands now, highlights of the proposed bylaws include the following topics. Changing the name to Garbage and Recycling Advisory Committee. Ensuring that recruitment and selection is open to all and includes equity considerations. Adding the provision that the board adopts the committee's bylaws. Increasing the number of voting public member positions from six to nine reducing the number of industry member positions from three to one and make it non-voting, changing the membership term from five years to four years, adding term limits to allow no more than two successive terms of membership, designating at least one annual meeting for member training and ongoing education purposes, allowing for both in-person and online committee meetings, providing pre-committee meetings with staff as requested, and adding duties related to the Solid Waste Disposal Code. I'm happy to answer questions about the overall bylaws or a specific section within the bylaws. Also, if you would like to submit anything in writing after this meeting, please send them to me. Um, I do intend to incorporate changes and and then resend out a draft to you all um, and tom can give a few more highlights about how the board work session went but uh, i just wanted to give you an overall i did start with the existing bylaws that have been in place for at least eight or nine years so um, they're not exactly starting over from the beginning but we did make some pretty substantive changes Thanks, Kathy. And I think another thing that's really important for our conversation here this evening, um, you know, there's really two pieces to this. Um, one of the pieces is what we discussed last month, which is the code change for part of it, which really um, gets into that conversation we were having about the committee structure, um, committee voting members, um, industry members, community members, and 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 what that committee makeup is. So that's really a critical component, and that's not um, determined yet. We, um, as Kathy mentioned, we went to the um, work session um, last um, after the SWAC meeting last month, and we had a robust conversation with the board, and it was actually a very similar conversation that we had here. Um, I picked up on a very similar thread in that conversation, and it was is this a technical advisory committee or is this a community advisory committee? Um, and what is it? Um, and, that, and those are two different, very different things. And, and how, what does the board 
want from its advisory committee? Does it want a technical um, advisory group or does it want a community kind of advisory group that's just letting the board know how it's perceiving and taking and managing and taking services from the, from the service providers, providing service under the code? So that's, I think, the crux of the issue. And that's exactly what was highlighted in this meeting, too. Um, and I think, Beth, you summarized that very well um, at the end of that last meeting, is those are, those are two very different committees and two different, very different structures. Um, the takeaway we got from the work session was somewhat um, loose, but we understood it at the staff level to, um, to to uh, guide us in the direction of driving down the direction of making the purpose align with the proposed committee structure as it's proposed here and as it was proposed to you. Um, so that would be realigning the committee purpose um, to make sure it's explicit that it's a community advisory committee intended to provide advice to the board based on customer experience from different customer classes, from community members that these rules would um, basically influence the service being provided to them from the salt waste system. Um, that, so we're, that's what the assumption we're operating on right now. Um, we are, as Kathy mentioned, going to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with each commissioner because we need to understand a little bit more about what they really want from us. Um, they can't meet with us except in work session because it's a public meeting unless they have one-on-one -on -one meetings and we can actually meet with each commissioner and they can tell us what they want. Um, if it's different, <laughs> then we're back in the position of trying to figure out what the majority of the board wants. Um, we do plan to return to another work session on January 5th um, to present another proposal to them based off what we heard at work session and what we heard in our one-on-one -on -one meetings with them um, and see if it hits the mark for them that time. So that's kind of where we are on that. Another point that came up in that meeting, which I think is important, and we can kind of use this as a guiding principle for this conversation this evening, is there was a little bit of confusion about um, how far down we're getting. Um, if we're talking just at code level, we're really talking high level concepts and we're talking like we had the conversation last week versus when we get down into the bylaw level like we do here, you can see we, we've kind of outlined a strategy for how we would ensure um, more diverse representation on the committee. And how do we, um, what's, the members, what's the public member makeup look like? And what interest groups are we interested in having served on the committee? And those are questions that are answered by the bylaws. Um, so the board really asked us to come back as a, in a parallel process as well. They said, well, next time you come back and talk code, come, come back with the bylaws too. So we really see what the code changes mean when they go down into the bylaws, into the weeds. What does it mean to have uh, diverse representation on the committee? Um, they were asking those questions and we had answers, but we didn't have that, that information in front of them. So this is the proposal that's here um, now. So I think this conversation, um, it's up to you all as your, as your committee. Um, we could talk about the higher level concepts and continue the conversation from last month. Um, and we could, or we could also get into the bylaws and, and talk about other parts of the bylaws that we didn't get a chance to talk about last month. So that's kind of where I will um, leave it at this point, I think. I'm happy to answer questions too. Me too. For those of us that have been on the committee for a long time, are they proposing that we uh, get grandfathered in and get two more cycles? Or are they saying everybody who's been here more than two terms uh, should resign in the next two weeks? No, I think, I think no. the, um, I think, the way it would work is the next time your term expires, if you had have, would have been here more than eight years at that time, you would be termed out. So okay. you wouldn't be eligible for re-upping re your term, but we're not going to ask you to leave on January 5th, <laughs> if that's what you're asking. That was what I was asking. Okay. <laughs> and, and there is the caveat that unless the board um, continues the term, and there may be reasons, like we can't, like, there aren't applicants or they want a particular person to continue serving. So it's still in the board's hands, but that's the thought is as we cycle through the end of terms, we'll figure, we'll figure out who's meeting the criteria um, in terms of term limits. Thank you. Um, so uh, I want to say that I listened into that work session on the 17th, I think. And Tom, I, uh, you do a great job. 
I want to say that right up front. Um, but I was taken aback by um, the board's questions about thinking we were a technical committee, um, which I've never thought us to be. Um, it's more a community uh, type of committee. So I would really like more definition on that and, and where we're, what we are. And I think you just said that you're going to go to all of the board members individually to get that comment from them so that we know what our committee is supposed to be doing. Um, and so if we're, it seems like if it's a difference between technical, I am not a technical person in solid waste and recycling or com committee, uh, community, which I feel like I am, um, I need to know what that is, what that looks like. So I was real confused. Yeah. Thank you. I, and you know, yeah, I don't know if you did notice that kind of my reaction to um, it was Commissioner Rogers that expressed that he thought it was a technical committee and and another comment was well if they're not going to do rate review that means the board is and I wasn't really sure what where that was going and and I think I I, I tried to um, and he used the word rubber stamp which I didn't think is that's not the word that I think is fair and even if it's not a technical advisory committee it's more of a a pulse. Um, that's the way I think of it. It's like, is this reasonable? Do you does this pass the sniff test? Um, that's really what I see these committees to help us do because we um, have conversations and we get down in the weeds and we work with our industry partners and we come up with a proposal and we bring it forward and we have this advisory committee that helps us um, take a reality check and say, whoa, that's that's kind of that's out there. And and I, I know we had a really good conversation with the business food scraps. Um, rules in this group about bundling versus not and that's I think that's exactly what this committee can help us do and, and that's the way I see this committee as well um, and I honestly don't um, I don't know if I would was be able to answer what it would mean for this to be a, a technical advisory committee um, in the true sense um, and I don't know how it would provide technical advice on the operation of the solid waste system um, I just think that is a very different kind of uh, governing or advisory body in my mind. We're definitely not a technical advisory committee, but we have definitely got a lot of technical education in our duties as providing community feedback. I take Sue, for instance, she, she's, she's done a really good job of representing schools over the years and I think been given a lot of good feedback from the industry members on why some things are the way they are from a technical perspective or maybe technical is not the right word, but from a logistical perspective of why things are done the way they are sometimes. And Jeff, you know, Jeff Murray would give us good technical feedback. The no does it, Beth does it, you know, the, uh, Carl does it, and, and and all those, all those things really help for us to be able to provide better feedback in. Um, so there is an element of technical mm, feedback that happens, right? That makes this committee provide better feedback overall. Um, and that, that was part of what we were getting at last week or last month, that without the, without the industry members, then this, this could quickly just devolve into, I want lower rates and I want quieter trucks or something. I don't know, I don't know right? Um, so that said though, I do think the direction you're going with getting more community feedback is a really good one. But what I just said, I think is the danger of where you could end up with 11 community members who don't have a really good grounding of this whole supply chain. 
you know, I'm not exactly sure what feedback they give other than do they like their service? Do they like their rate? You know, uh, uh, it's like Ken, I go back many times to go back to Ken's origin story of being on this board, something he didn't like happened and he got on this board and he got an education, right? Um, and there's value in that. There sure is. And, and I think we'd be lost. It'd be very easy to get off into the weeds um, with something that's not realistic and not doable um, if we didn't have the industry folks here to help us. And I don't see any technical. And Beth, are, are, is the industry looking for any kind of technical support or technical reinforcement? Um, this doesn't has never seemed to me to be a technical issue oriented kind of, of discussion that we've ever had. We have, we get, uh, I know that was, I know that was to Beth, I'm sorry, I was going to, but okay. we do get, we get a lot of technical education. We do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I knew more, I know more now about garbage than I ever anticipated. Yeah, I think about the, I think, yeah. I think maybe what we're getting hung up on is, is the term technical. It makes it sound uh, scientific, um, perhaps, and maybe what we need to be addressing is the role of subject matter experts and yeah. a community, their subject matter experts on the receiving end of the service and could speak well as to that, which is very informative, but as has already been mentioned, concerns arise when you're only looking at one side of the service and um, you know maybe they want you know service that that really isn't practical or if they understood the cost related to it or the societal or environmental impacts related to providing that which the subject matter experts you know industry and others can help provide then that makes it a more constructive conversation I think it's important to um, to recognize the responsibility the county has um, in managing this um, approach and system, right? So this is a, a regulated monopoly that the county is responsible for operating. So that's what our staff are charged with is is going in and really understanding those technical details. Um, we have a, a very close working relationship with um, the Washington Holders Association and our certificate holders. Um, and that's so that I think that it's the responsibility of the county to say, wait, wait, I mean, this isn't, this isn't realistic, guys, or this isn't going to happen um, in, in a sense. So I don't, and this committee, again, it's an advisory body, right? Um, so when I think of a community facing advisory body, I think of it as giving the county the opportunity to, to ask its constituents, to ask the customers of its service, whether or not the proposed changes to that service are reasonable or something that they are supportive or something they want or are on the right track. Um, I think when we get into, is it gonna work with a side loader truck? Um, is the enclosure big enough? Is the rate, give enough rate on return for the haulers to operate in a responsible operating margin? Those are very technical conversations that we have, not necessarily in this committee either. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's an important dynamic. And, and the point I was trying to make with our board um, at the work session is, my feeling um, is that we have a robust relationship with our um, private industry partners. Um, we work very closely, we communicate often, we share um, draft rule language, we, we make comments, we have um, consultants that work with each other on rate review and we talk about our DCRs and we come into the financial review process. Um, but what we don't have robust in our process is, is, a, is what I would call a representative community group that can give us feedback on whether or not we're on the right track, whether or not we're meeting their expectations. And I, and I think this committee gives us a flavor of that, but, but I think we could do better in terms of making sure that we're actually hearing from those that we haven't heard from before and that we're hearing from them and we're not kind of um, hearing what we want to hear from them, if that makes sense. Kathy, you have your hand up. Yeah, following up on Tom, one, I just want to remind 
that we are still proposing as it stands right now an industry member at the table whether or not they're voting or not you know the board will weigh in on that but there still will be industry representation because you know it's one of the things i recognize too that it's good to have some subject matter expertise right there as opposed to calling someone in to report on something um, the kinds of things that Tom's talking about are sort of some of the new sort of different focus on some of the duties for the committee that I'm thinking about, like, um, you know, advising on waste reduction and recycling education programs and campaigns. You know, our staff certainly can come and present and then be very diverse and, and representing many different communities in unincorporated Washington County, you all would be able to weigh in on how do you think the message will go? You know, how successful do you think it will be? Um, we are also uh, want to make sure that uh, we include in our, in our staff reports to the board a section on sort of the assessment of the impact of policy decisions on all of those very um, different community groups. Um, and that we did have a discussion and here's what you all said was important or here's sort of the pros and cons. So we are also are going to be very intentional. I mean, if we're, if we're, if the board agrees that we should go this route, then it's incumbent upon staff to also, you know, follow through and um, we're not just doing this just to do it. We really do think it's important. So those are just a couple of um, things that we're thinking about. Say, say, say that again, what, what, what were some of the things you're thinking about bringing in, bringing in Kathy? Um, a possibility maybe that um, the advisory committee could weigh in on sort of our educators, you know, campaigns that are like the big ones, like we're rolling out business composting or, um, you know, some other uh, sort of major pro programmatic effort. Um, we'd, we'd like to kind of have that very, a diverse group listen and um, give feedback and I think the board it, it would be beneficial to the board um, for one thing it's not just one-sided to what staff thinks and I think um, that'll give them you know sort of you folks I look at it you folks are the conduit between the board and their policy decision making and the multifamily folks and the you know all the different groups that we don't hear much from now so that's what we're trying to do so that's one of the things um i don't know i'm sitting here uh out of just sitting here thinking through this and i'm scrolling through uh the agendas over the last couple years and food scraps, okay, that probably could use some diversity of thought on how to do that. I could see that. But a lot of other things we talk about, uh, franchise agreements, I don't know. To me, that doesn't seem like it would need a lot of diversity of thought. Franchise transfers from one entity to another, doesn't seem like it needs much. Um, I'm looking at uh, there's commercial food scraps. Uh, I'm just just trying to find stuff, right? Uh, hey, can I just add something? You, you made me think of something that that um, so we get occasional complaints because since we moved in, they built houses behind us, um, and people apparently don't look at where they are moving to until they live there, um, and so we've had complaints that we are a large garbage dump in the middle of Hillsboro. And then we have to go back and explain that we are not, we don't take garbage. Um, we're a recycling facility. And then their complaints are, well, people just pull in and drop stuff off in there. Well, that's what the public drop off depot is. Um, you know, there's, there's, there, so there is a lot of, you know, you do run that risk. I think if you get, you may come. 
that somebody, um, you know, you, you, you're going to have a learning curve, I, I think, like you guys talked about before. Right? And, and, you know, Groundhog Day, you know, the, the, rep the representation of industry isn't, isn't complete. You know, like Carl, I think, mentioned, he, you know, they run MRFs and routes and, and uh, composting. I, I have some knowledge of, of hauling, but not, I, Tom, you probably know more about franchise agreements and, and things that, than I do. You know, I, I could talk about processing and, and markets and things like that, but uh, you're not going to get, uh, by limiting it, you're not going to get as much information for people to make decisions on. And that, that's my opinion, but, uh, you know, you, the more the more places you can draw from, the better. Especially if you're going to bring in uh, more of a, if you're turning it into more of a field group um, than an informed informational group, then I, then I guess that it doesn't matter what you know. But I, I just, it just reminded me of the, the 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 complaints that we get that we're a big garbage dump in the middle of town and something has to be done. But. Honestly, you've just hit on on the, the whole problem with small airports. You put a small airport in out in the middle of nowhere. And suddenly there's a, and Denver is a, and the, their international airport. They're a huge airport. They put 30 miles out of town to completely up, up, be out of town and away from everything. And now there's a huge complex of houses and stuff around it. And I'm sure the people there complain about the airplane noise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we've, been, we've made a lot of adjustments over the years. As they put houses, we've, we've changed how we operate and what we, when we do things. But you still have somebody who moves in and they're like, why are there trucks going in and out of that place? Uh, what's going on over here? So it's just, just a thought. Um, yeah, that's just human nature. And and um, I lost my train of thought. I'll be well, back. Well, often once we, we explain to them, you know, if they come contact us and we kind of explain what's going on and maybe even show them, then they're like, oh, okay, now I get it. I just didn't know what was going on back there um, in, inside the, you know, the magic box. So. Yeah, and, and I, I appreciate that, Vinod, and I, <clears throat> I think that kind of also, again, in my mind, um, really continues to highlight the importance of the responsibility the county has to educate its advisory committee members. Um, and I think we've been pretty transparent up front. This is, um, will be a monumental task for us to completely change the way we've managed this committee and interacted with this committee and, and how it interacts with us. And Mike, you um, we're looking back at past agendas and and I appreciate um, what you're saying, but I would say too that our intention is to have a, a very different conversation regardless of what the committee makeup is going forward. It's my vision um, as the division manager to, to have a more robust advisory body that we can bounce ideas off and work through policy development with and really think about um, the services that we're providing to the community um, in this public-private partnership and how they can best meet the community's needs um, and and provide excellent services and I think that's really our goal and um, and we so that's I think it's really there's a lot of responsibility on the county to make sure that it doesn't just turn into a, a group like a place to complain about far west's um, loud back door in a sense <laughs> well, and, and I don't and I don't want to say I don't want to, to imply at all that I don't agree with making the, the, the committee look more like the community and, and bringing in that input I just I just that's just give the other side of the coin is all so, oh, um, in, in the course of, of, are you looking at other juris, other jurisdictions are ahead of us in terms of uh, food scraps and food scrap waste? And my understanding is important that you get a separate container and you're supposed to put your food scraps in that. And I don't know how you separate them from the garbage flow and what have you. Has there been any pushback from any group or lots of people in Portland that saying this is too much trouble, uh, similar to the the people who were unhappy when we came up with recycling bins and said, I don't have room in my garage for another bin. <laughs> so the so. Portland's program and most every other jurisdiction's program is adding food to yard debris. Um, so it doesn't add another bin to the service that that container just is a kitchen collection pail. That's a tool for a homeowner to get yeah. their scraps from the kitchen to the bin. Um, and we actually get, that's one of the most, one of the most significant, pieces of feedback we get from the community is I want food scraps collection in unincorporated Washington County. Um, and so that's a challenge for us. And we are challenged by that um, for a lot of reasons right now. Um, primary reason that we're challenged by that is nature's needs is the only, the one and only place to process this stuff. And also happens to be the one and only place to transfer this stuff for 
us in the North County, kind of north of Beth 26 and Aloha area that makes sense. Um, and they simply don't have the right facility layout and capacity to directly receive um, food scraps on route trucks from a 63,000 customer base system. So they are collecting materials from Hillsboro, they're collecting materials from Beaverton and Forest Grove. And that combined is about 45, 50,000 households. And if we threw another 60,000 household system on top of that for unincorporated, it would, in my mind, cause some significant concern in terms of traffic and perception of what's happening and nature's needs. So that's our biggest barrier really is transfer capacity. Um, so that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a significant, that's a great kind of conversation point though. And I think you brought up food scraps, Mike. I think one of the best um, conversations we had in my recent memory with this committee was the conversation that led towards the recommendation on bundling food scraps for businesses, which COVID cut us off at the knees from when we didn't, the board didn't get to vote on it yet. And we're just gonna go back to them um, you know, in the future. But I think it was a really good discussion and we talked about the pros and cons of it. And, and Sue, you were vocal about some concerns about this approach. And I think your concerns come from your perspective of being a commercial customer to the, in the system and, and paying for something that you're you might not uh, as a commercial customer be benefiting from as much of a, as other commercial customers. And I think that's the kind of thing that I think is really important for us to, to have those conversations and hear about. Um, so Tom, here's, here, here would be my advice. Here'd be my advice. Go back and look at, I don't know if it's your, <clears throat> your plan or Metro's plan that has the goals of the reduction of garbage in the in the increase in recycling and you know if we're going to if you're going to increase and come up with a, a, a committee of community members then, then this thing should more focus on you know how do you increase the downloads and the usage of the app how do you get more people going to the metro hazardous waste dump offs how do you get more people recycling how do you you know all those things that are positive on the waste stream right how will this committee that this new makeup of this committee forward those kinds of goals versus you know uh, transfer of facility licenses and rate reviews and that kind of stuff that we did in the past you know so what will having a committee like that how would how will having a committee be able to do that for you. I think if you can show, <clears throat> if you could show that, you'll get buy-in, you know, from all your commissioners. Yeah, I think um, a lot of um, the work in the past. Like if you got a committee of, I haven't heard her today, but you got a committee of like five Sandras, Right. I'm and, here. Yeah. <laughs> you got a committee of five Sandras and you know three Ashvans and what you know, people who that who, that that was their thinking. You could, you know, make some big changes. And I think um, you know, I think part of the challenge we're facing is 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 our past um engagement with the committee right and you you talk about transferring certificates from one to another um, when waste management buys a little garbage it's like what is that why are we <laughs> the board even asked us why are we voting on this do we have a can we say no it's like well, not really i mean <laughs> yeah what would happen it, it's a good that? question right and i don't know if that's the if that's really appropriate because we don't even the county doesn't even know what role it plays in those kinds of those, right. um, so you know, so in that in that discussion many many years ago, uh, because I didn't understand how this works, I said we shouldn't be allowing people to sell uh, franchises to each other. Franchises should be surrendered to the county, and then we should have a bidding process. And a proposed people who propose to do it should buy, should bid, and the high bidder gets that franchise, whether it's waste management or Joe Smith, who just happens to have a lot of money, um, and. Uh, I got very strange looks from all the people in the industry who <laughs> thought that was the craziest thing they'd ever heard. But most other franchise operations, 
you surrender the franchise back to whoever is the franchise grantor, and uh, then the, the, the grantor, in this case the county, uh, goes out and remarkets it to whoever wants it, and, and why an individual like uh, the family that owned Aloha Garbage could turn around and sell it um, to waste management uh, always seemed to be a, t a terrible distortion of the normal franchise system. So I raised the question and got shot down and haven't raised it again. But but I think, Mike, I agree with you that, that I'm not sure that we handle transfers real well. Kathy. Um, I, just, I just would keep in mind that the enabling statute for this committee is Chapter 804, which has a lot of things in it that I think this committee would still need to weigh in on, like collection rates and like certificates. I'm not, I don't, well, unless the board really like went an entirely different direction, it's hard for me to see um, think the major items that are currently done going away. It's a matter of, are there additional things that we would like to get weigh in? And of those things that are mandated by code, are we looking at it in the way we should look at it? Is there, an, you know, should we hear uh, the fixed income voice or should we hear, you know, whatever the other voices are? So I wouldn't want to give the impression that as it stands right now, that like rate review would go away because that's very explicitly set out in code. And um, it's just a matter of, you know, how the board wants this committee to address those items that currently exist in Chapter 804. And I would also add to that, Kathy, that I think it's really important that people, community members that participate in the system understand what goes into rate setting and what you know so it just it creates so much more transparency for us as the county to say this is this is what we did this is the analysis we made this is um the this is the agreement we got with the haulers association this is what we're presenting before you and it's it gives us a reality check i kind of said earlier it said you can say well that's that seems crazy to me or yeah that makes sense to me it's it's interesting and complex um so i think that's you know those are important pieces and and ultimately you know, managing the solid waste collection system is our number one priority. It's our number one responsibility um, is making sure that garbage gets collected um, in unincorporated Washington County. And how that happens is, is what this committee has a lot of influence over in a sense. And, and we are looking at it as a system and a system could be pretty broad and that's why new programs like composting or residential food waste or, um, you know, an education campaign. There's just a lot, of, lot more things that I think could fall under that umbrella, along with collection rates and administrative rules and some of the other items. By the way, I, um, it, it may not be scientific, but I would call rate review technical. So would I. I agree. <laughs> that ain't something you just walk into and go, oh, <laughs> yeah, looks good. So have we talked this to death? Well, I, I would just ask if there is anything in the body of the beyond membership and sort of purpose um, that struck anyone as being, you know, looking like it doesn't belong or not something you could live with. Um, I added things like setting a calendar. You know, I think that's helpful. I think there's a lot of things that staff could do to um, provide support to the committee that aren't being done now. Um, you know. Another category I think it's important to think about is we have um, in like section two, three, we try to, to um, call out um, different um, characteristics of membership categories. I and mean, this is where we're trying to identify a mechanism to really promote intentional representation. So we have um, people representing ethnic and racial communities, the disability community, the senior and aging community, 
um, housing interests, so multifamily, homeowners association, single family. I think these are the kind of categories we're trying to identify that we feel like would be important um, perspectives to to hear from businesses, you know, chambers, a food generating business, a retail business, um, students, youth voice um, in a sense, um, retirees kind of thinking about more of the fixed income perspective. So these are kind of the, the master recyclers as an interest group, um, environmental groups, um, environmental advocates. Those are the kinds of um, categories. So I think that's another place that we would appreciate feedback on if you think there um, is a, somebody that we should try to identify as a priority um, segment of our community to be represented here. Um, we also tried to deformalize the meeting process a little bit. Um, the original bylaws were very strict Robert rules of order, two minutes, testify, public chair calls you. Um, we tried to um, make that more casual and more of a conversational thing. And I think that's important for um, ensuring that we can have robust conversations and and can you um, had talked about being a chair that's interested in hearing what folks in the in the audience might have questions about or input on and I think um, this kind of op makes that formalizes that approach a little bit more in um, in these draft bylaws we also uh, include a um, section here about officers and um, in electing officers and and officers serving in their roles for terms um, on the committee. So every two years, the committee would would re you know, elect its chair and its vice chair. And and to be honest with you, Ken, since I've been here, you've been chair, and I don't even know how that was determined in the first place. You've done a great job, but I don't know if it's ever been a conversation that we've had. And I think it's important to kind of to recheck that um, and have that conversation as a committee. And and the and I took over from a gentleman who'd had it for I don't know how many eleven years or something. So um, the the it seemed to be something you got slotted into and just left there. <laughs> so uh, uh, I think that that, that I want to compliment you on that because I came out of a background of school board meetings and what have you, and I found that most of the population isn't conversant with with Robert's rules of order or what the nuances of that are and so many minutes to talk and what have you. And the average person on the street, no matter what the topic is, doesn't have them organized enough to fill up two minutes exactly and then sit down and go away. Uh, uh, people who are used to testifying before the legislature or something learn those skills. But for everybody else, you just need to be relaxed and let people talk. It's, it, 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 it's more important than, than having to follow a rigid structure. So I want to compliment you on that. I think that was really good that, that we have moved more and more in that direction. And the same thing for whether or not somebody signed up at the beginning of the meeting to, to, to want to talk. If somebody wants to talk during the meeting, we should let them. It's just, it, it just seems like it doesn't take up that much of our time. I have one other question for you. I am enjoying finding that the Zoom meeting process works very well for me, both for this and for a number of other things. And um, I'm not sure <laughs> I would advocate <laughs> that we go back to the drive halfway across town and go, go meet in a small room over in, in the uh, Hillsborough Center. I'm in, uh, this is working well for me for all kinds of things. And, and so uh, I think we're, we're, we're having a cosmic change in the whole world uh, on, on how this works. And it's not just here, but I want to, uh, say that uh, I at least would not be a strong advocate for going back to to in-person meetings at all. I'm finding these are very comfortable for me and you know I don't get to have my cat on my lap any other place. <laughs> and, and for me too I mean my commute's 10 feet or whatever but I also think we have to keep in mind like sort of technology access. Um, we wouldn't want to preclude participation um, if someone was unable or, or, or it became a barrier. It was difficult to be able to um, log in and, and participate. So we did make the bylaws say it could be either or, which gives us some flexibility as to like how many meetings might be online or in person. So it's kind of squishy on purpose for that. And, and I think we can do a better job advertising um, We've never had a large turnout by the general public in, 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 in the years I've been on the board. So uh, except for, you know, one case where uh, 
we had somebody putting dog poop in the yard debris or something. But uh, <laughs> other than that, <laughs> and, and a couple with the, the old gentleman who had his, his uh, dumping site down next to the winery. Uh, uh, I forget. Anyway, I have trouble with names. But anyway, uh, he was just a colorful old guy. Go ahead, Beth. So, so if we're aiming, you know, if the county is aiming to make this more diverse, which we would support, of course, have it reflect better the community that's being served, I would assert in meeting format that both should be available, both in person as well as virtual. And, you know, that that's not a novel concept. <laughs> I mean, I had two jobs back ago for me, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, that was normal um, as a government person that we would have both formats available. It makes it much more accessible to folks. Um, in looking, so that that's my comment on that topic, but as long as I'm speaking and it's a little bit more challenging to jump in, I'm just gonna go if I, that, if I may. Um, the other thing that um, I would mention is we did, go back and forth quite a bit on whether or not the industry member, and I appreciate that we would have uh, one person actually on the committee. I think that that's useful and um, helps with the conversation and, and helps with the efficiency of the working of the group. But I would like to um, talk more about whether that person should be voting or non-voting and hear um, members input on that. Yeah, that, that's a question I have is uh, who wants the um, industry members to be non voting? Is that the board of commissioners? I mean, who, who decided this? Because our last it's an meeting, open question. when we talked about this, everybody seemed to agree that that everything was fine. And, and then I read this agenda after your work uh, session. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Now there's no votes for the industry members. And that's not what we had talked about. And I don't know. It just seems like it's, it's, I don't know if there's like some kind of past bad blood or some kind of vendetta. That's what, that's how I, I perceive it. It's like, wow, they're just getting rid of them all together. And I didn't like that. that so I would like to know who, uh, whose idea was that? Yeah. So I think that's an open question, Sandra. Um, no one uh, um, has directed us to, to say industry members are non-voting. Um, I would say that it is, um, there is some precedent in the county that um, regulated industries don't vote on their own rules and regulations. So the EMS um, ambulance um, system is similarly franchised to a franchisee and they serve on an advisory council or an alliance, I guess they call it, as an affiliate member. So they don't necessarily, they engage in the conversation, they participate in the discussions, but when it comes down to a decision, they don't vote on the outcome of the recommendation. So I think there is open, it's obviously open for discussion. It's not off the table. It's the current proposal is, is that there's no um, voting um, rights with that position. And I think that is mainly driven by the perception of a conflict of interest that's potentially there. Um, and, and I know there's other ways to deal with that. And one of the things, um, and you know, just ex expecting or asking um, voting members to um, to recuse themselves or not vote on positions that would um, affect their um, commercial interests is an approach. Um, but I, you know, personally, I think um, <clears throat> I find it. Um, I think most of the votes this committee makes affect the commercial interests of the collection industry. Um, and not saying that that they're always just voting on personal and private interests, but I think that there's there's something there um, to be said about that. Um, and it doesn't mean that it's that's the right answer, but that's just is the that's my personal um, sense on it. I don't it's not couched in bad blood or it's not a battle. We're not trying to evict industry from these conversations um, by no means. Um, and I hope Beth would attest to this. My approach in 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 managing the solid waste um, division at Washington County is that we need to have a very good working relationship with the haulers. They're our partners. We're doing this together and we're trying to work together to achieve our common goals and our common outcomes. I, I was actually looking at some of the other committees that Washington County has and I, I, I noticed some of them didn't have any industry members, but there was the affordable housing committee 
does have industry members on their board and it looks like they are voting. Are they getting away from that as well? Are, are all the committees getting away from industry members being voting members or? I'm not sure, okay. I can't answer that per se. I know it's a, it's a lot, it's a big project right now where the county is trying to um, update or encouraging departments and divisions to, to incorporate equity into their advisory bodies and boards. Um, and some are moving faster than others. So <clears throat> we are one of the first ones to really um, bring forward a, a robust proposal. The other group is the Public Health Advisory yes. Committee that has done some of this work and they have I guess you would call industry on their committee, but they don't necessarily directly regulate um, a service um, industry like solid waste and recycling or EMS is the other example that I have that's very similar in a sense to the county. I, I have a bit of a take on this. Um, I don't remember when it was. I but, understand that. Oh, my phone doesn't understand me. Um, I don't remember when it was, but there was a point at one time, Ken will probably remember this, when I quickly learned that our vote don't matter. <laughs> uh, the county commissioners decided to go against, completely against what we voted. Yep. And do exactly opposite what we wanted or what we thought was the right thing to do. So I was like, okay. Um, you know, and that's within their prerogative. Um, Sue, can you un unmute and then say whatever you want to say? Well, I'm going to just jump in exactly, Mike, with what you're saying, um, because we're only advisory. So our votes that we vote with are simply to recommend one thing or another. They really have no weight. So, um, and I think that having industry members able to vote on our recommendations is a good thing. I don't, you know, because the board can overrule or not overrule, they just take our recommendations and then they rule the way they want to rule. I discovered early on that, um, and this is before Beth's time, but with Charlie uh, White, um, who had her position and was on the on the board had direct access to all the commissioners. He could, he could set up a meeting and meet with them one on one with every one of them. I was never able to do that in spite of trying to to arrange to have meetings um, directly with the commissioners. Um, uh, it just didn't happen. Um, they're well insulated from the public if they want to be. So uh, uh, and I, I remember distinctly what Sue was, uh, the instant that Sue was talking about has had occurred uh, three or four times as long as I've been on the board where we recommended something, uh, but it wasn't what industry wanted and industry was able to lobby effectively directly to the commissioners. And uh, that was what was implemented. Go ahead, Beth. So Ken, that's a very interesting statement that you're making and, and I'm very sad personally to hear that because elected officials are exactly that. And having worked for elected officials way, way, way back when, right, you know, out of undergrad, I was a legislative aide up in the state of Washington where I went to my undergrad. And um, constituents in our office had first entry and priority over the lobby. So, you know, I think that that maybe more telling about the elected officials perhaps that you were dealing with oh yeah then and and the and the county system itself than than the industry person or the industry role so that that's my personal opinion that um there should be access and, and i can say being in this position it has not happened with the county but with other um jurisdictions in the metro area I have had an easier time in at, at times making arrangements to meet with members of Congress than with some of those elected officials. So, um, <laughs> so a true statement, absolutely a true statement. And meeting with members of Congress is not easy either. But oh, um, I, I and and I get an immediate response from. Uh, 
uh, House Representative Bonamici or either of the two senators when I call them, and, and I'm not a big contributor or anything, but, but so, right. some staff member uh, gives me a call back and, and talks about whatever my issue is that I want them to deal with, and uh, I, I find it be articulate. Go ahead, Kathy. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't realize that, I, anyway, go ahead. It's okay. I didn't mean to cut you off, Beth, sorry. Um, I was just going to say that when I step back and look at it, I think of what, what is staff's role in the committee? Like, if we're going to look at industry, what is staff? Well, Tom's on the committee, but he doesn't vote, and that's because staff already is the, is the entity that typically is putting forward a position, and then we're and we're the ones that write the reports that go to the board. So we already have a lot of influence. And so we're just trying to sort of equalize various, you know, spheres of right. influence is kind of is how I, I looked at it. And I think if staff voted on the committee, then it's our proposal and it's what we voted for and you wouldn't get any, you know, any more diverse input. So, can That's I just, just speak another, to, another thing we thought about. Can I speak to that past that previous train of thought and and Sue and and Ken and Mike. I appreciate um, he, you know hearing the, those feelings and and I would I would challenge that a little bit and say that I I sense that the board at least the current board really does care what the advisory committee thinks and has to say. I think that um, in the past there may have been situations where they felt like they had a different set of um, information or a different, um, different, they were playing from a different, on a different course in a sense, right? And so they made decisions that were absolutely counter to that, the, the advice of the, of the committee. But, and I also would say that the current board is not the same board that um, did those things and made right. those decisions and didn't have hold meetings with you, Ken. So I think, you, you know, we need to make sure that we give the commissioners the opportunity to to show that they care about the committee and, and that they want to hear from their constituents, because I do believe that the current board is interested in, in hearing from this committee and, and, and would be willing to meet with you if you asked for a meeting with the chair or whoever it would be. So. That, that's that's really good to hear. So thank you. So um, I have one other thing that I wanted to say, and that is that um, I don't know how many years I've been on the committee, a few. Um, and what I want to say is that staff presents to the committee well. They have vetted the kinds of things they're asking us to consider and present us with, I think, a complete story of um, what the issues are. And I don't think there have been many times where our committee has gone against the recommendations of staff, um, it's been rare. If anything, we have asked for more information and they've gone out and they've gotten that for us. Um, and so I think that as a committee, we receive the information we need as a group, um, both public members and industry members and we are able to um, vote on that as a whole. So um, I think staff does a great job um, and I think we work well together. And I think that um, I can see getting more members, but I would hate to lose industry members. I think they have a valuable add to the committee. So I'll shut up now. Okay. Can I, I, it's just, uh, Kathy, your statement's confusing to me. Uh, uh, I, I don't think it's apples and apples to say that a, a person who applied to be on a committee and is part of the committee is the same as the conveners and the controllers of the committee. So I, I mean, it just, that, that doesn't, I, I'm not really going either way with that. It just doesn't, I don't think it's the same comparison. I don't think that's a, a, a right way to do it. It's like, it's like the, you know, the mayor and me being on a committee or something. We're not, we're not equals in this, so. I was just thinking about it, that the board convenes the committee. They're the enabler of the committee and then they're looking for um, recommendations and information from a variety of groups, staff, industry, community members. Um, and so in that sense, do we have an unequal 
as staff, because we work for the county already for one for one thing, are we not as are we are we is our sphere of power higher than some than one of the other groups that they're looking for input? So I was just thinking at a really high level. I wasn't thinking about us actually combine, convening a, a meeting. So, but and, your point's well taken. And I'm, I'm new to this, so I, I don't know how it's all been formed. I just, that yeah. just, it's, it's, it's sort of like my kids are part of my family, but I'm convening them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you, you, you want to remember that the, the county board um, is not necessarily subject matter experts in every area. So they end up with a planning commission and, and uh, uh, other traffic and stuff. Uh, committees who are to delve down into it. But the thing that has, has interested me over time has been that one of the structures the county could very well adopt is going straight to the um, uh, staff, what we refer to as staff, um, and and get their expert advice from staff and, and not have an input directly from industry and people in the neighborhood and what have you. And I think it's to their credit that they have established this process both for uh, solid waste and for uh, planning commission issues and, and uh, what have you, um, that uh, a citizen committee uh, politically is just dynamite. It works great. I know that when we built the new school in Reedville District, we set up a committee to draw the new boundaries. <laughs> Nobody is ever happy with the way new boundaries get drawn. So it was just not something we, the board, had to get down into the, and, and the committee did a great job and they went out and they drove the neighborhoods and everything. I think this is a similar situation where you have a bunch of people who have gotten immersed in it and, and we're not really full-fledged subject matter experts in the level of say Jeff Garbarino um, or Jeff Murray, but we have a, a better understanding of the man in the street and we're able to absorb and, and deal with both sides of the issue and act as a buffer for the board. So I, I think that it's, it's a workable structure uh, going for, you know, and, and has proven you know, quite useful with the, for the committee over the years. Or for the for the commissioners, I would also add. Ken, we have plenty of influence over our board. <laughs> they yeah. ask us. They ask us for advice and questions all the time, right? They look at us as subject matter experts, absolutely. So as they should. When, when the commissioners get an email that says, "Why the heck aren't you doing this in your garbage system?" That goes straight to Tom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I would say we will know more. Um, we're. I, I can speak, I hope I can speak for Tom too, that we're trying to be as transparent both directions. So we're bringing to you what we think and what the board has told us. And then we're gonna go to the board and set forth what we've heard. And I hope that we will get some um, more specific direction, which would allow for a rewrite or an update of the bylaws, which will then circulate out to the group again. And as Kathy said, if you have specific yeah. red line suggestions on these bylaws or things that are missing or things that you don't think should be there, um, please share that with us. It, it won't be as easy to change them in the future because the board's going to actually adopt as part of a resolution and order. So now's our chance to like really, um, you know, get a good set of operational kind of guidelines going, leaving aside the membership question, which we hope to get more direction on. And I'll just end with whatever happens down the road, please tell people those aren't garbage trucks hauling garbage into our facility. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't heard anybody make a specific um, red line suggestion, but to summarize what I heard and I didn't speak on it myself, but I heard that industry members should be voting. So that would require a change. And then I heard at least one person say that they didn't, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I may have heard this incorrectly, but they didn't see a need to change the committee composition, which made me wonder, you know, if there should be more than one industry representative or or not have it be restricted like that so that may warrant more discussion i don't know i i've attempted to address that issue 
with a as as Tom alluded to earlier with a very open uh, meeting so that when Dean comes to a meeting even though he's not on the committee um, we welcome comments and, and input from waste management and so as their spokesman um, if he puts his hand up out there on the, on the floor um, I will certainly uh, call on him and, and see what he wants to say because I don't want to just steamroll ahead uh, just because he didn't sign the form at the beginning of the meeting or something like that. Uh, go ahead, Beth. I appreciate that. And can you do do a great job at that, but um, this is a, a legal document with that we have our going before the board and it's possible that people may come after you that aren't as understanding <laughs> as you are. <laughs> so I would ask that the document stand on its own and reflect the intention of the committee. Well, I'm inclined to agree that, that, you know, I would like the, the industry to be at a minority, but I would like to have, what do we have now? Three industry members? Um, yeah. And and I think that's worked very well and that's an ideal number. I do not see any reason because we basically have three different sections of industry. We have the haulers, we have the recyclers, the, the um, Northwest mm -hmm. Ecology, I think, what do they call themselves? Anyway, Ecology up there, uh, Nature's Needs. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, MRF, the, the the MRFs and, and, and uh, uh, disposal. disposal sites, uh, uh, dumps. <laughs> and, and so uh, that's, and traditionally at least, we've had one from each of those fa sectors of the industry. We, we, I don't know if that's deliberate or if it just worked out that way, but we've always had somebody who represented the haulers, somebody who represented the, and we were fortunate to have somebody like Jeff who knew everything about everything. <laughs> but, um, uh, so I think having three and leaving it at the current status, I don't want to exclude the industry. And I think that much of the knowledge that we've been able to obtain has come um, through the industry, people who are faced with these problems day by day and, and, and have a much better understanding of the mechanics of it. Um, it's not us that has a huge pa stack of paper that we don't know what to do with because the market for paper has just evaporated and gone away. And, and so uh, and we heard about it as it evolved and it was really very interesting, but it, it wasn't something that was an issue that we had to deal with. Go ahead, Kathy. Just making sure if I'm unmuted. Yep. Um, so, in, again, in the interest of full transparency, um, staff, when, you know, ultimately it goes to the board for approval. There isn't a, an action item associated with this from the committee, so it's up to staff to communicate what the committee's position is, but staff may take a slightly different committee, a different position than what the committee is proposing and it will be up to the board to give us direction about which which way they uh, want to land on. Um, obviously, we're going to go back and regroup. Um, it's been a really, really robust discussion and we definitely will carry the water in the sense of giving um, what your feedback has been, but I just don't want any surprises. Um, I'm not sure where we'll land, and we may get some very strong direction from the board as to what that sh landing place should be. So, but whatever it is, before they're actually adopted, they will come back to you all so that you can take a look and hopefully weigh in again if needed. My, my, I guess my final feedback to you on it would be, you have you will have a stronger citizen panel diverse or not with industry members sitting there with them right absolutely i agree so okay um there's nothing more on the agenda so uh do we want to call it quits or or does somebody have more they want to say Thank you for all your hard work. We appreciate what staff does to educate us all the time. And we appreciate that you listen to what we have to say. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Thank all of you. I, I, more voices, the better. I agree. Yeah, yeah thank you all very much. And okay. like I said, well, 
probably be back January, um, most likely, and we will have more information in January. And um, in the meantime, these all these documents are um, in the sausage making. Um, so if you have, um, please, if you have explicit written feedback, send that to us, um, and it would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Take care, Tom. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thank you all. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Have a good, good night. Happy holidays. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs>